Three, two, one, dropping! Yeah, I just lost the ski. So I took a pretty big spill and lost my ski. My buddy Riley was above me and he came down and probed around in my bomb hole and we looked around, but we couldn't find it. We could have stayed and probed some more, but there was a group above us waiting to drop and we didn't want to make them wait any longer. So pointed the one ski that I did have downhill and we got out of there. Thing is though, I really want my ski. And my other ski is having some serious separation anxiety. So where's my ski? Well, there's Revelstoke. There's RMR. And my ski is right there. A little slack country run called Lover's Lane. Lover's Lane isn't particularly hard to get to. From the Stoke chair, you take Lemming Line, and from there it's about an hour if you know where to go. The problem is that the ski patrol tend to shut lemming line anytime it's supposed to snow a bunch so that they can do avalanche control in the North Pole. And it's supposed to snow a bunch. Today's Sunday, and if I want my ski anytime before the spring, I gotta go get it tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna find it. Gonna make a banging vlog about it. <laughs> I think the title is gonna be Finding Ben Chetler. <laughs> ISO Ski. I don't think it'll be buried if it's in the tree. Yeah, I don't think so either. I also feel like we'll find it, it's gonna be somewhere in between us. Yeah. You didn't get a skin rip and shot. <laughs> oh, fuck. I didn't get a beacon shot or a skin rip and shot. Devastating. Uh, I'm gonna ski down to those that lower trees that I talked about. That'll be my safe spot. And Perfect. Once you see me there, drop down and we'll, you start high, I'll start low and we'll start probing. Sounds good. Cool. All right, have fun. So right there is kind of where I got launched yesterday, I think. And I believe I went to that bomb hole just down there. I didn't record any of our search because we were searching in an area with some decent overhead exposure. When we entered the line we were confident with the stability but we still didn't want to be there for any longer than we needed to. After about five minutes of searching a few streaks of slough came down on me from the cliffs above. We took the sloughing as a bright yellow warning light and decided that if it continued or increased in size we would abandon our search. The sloughing didn't continue but we did feel it starting to warm a bit and the snow picked up to what felt like about two centimeters an hour. So we gave ourselves a three minute warning. And then it happened. Woohoo! Hey, hey. Hi, Mr. Ben Shetler! Woohoo! Well, I guess you don't get to learn to mono ski now. No. <laughs> yeah! I wanna come your way, try not to slough your skis out or you. Okay, have fun. Oh yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I'm... I was I was pretty ready to give I know, up. I'm I was ready. I, I gave it the three minute warning. Like Yeah. My brain was like, okay, it's either gonna be up on the right or like right here. And I almost like right at the start, I almost debated coming over here and I was like, fuck it. I said I would search that side. 
Hey, we had a system. <laughs> we had a system. It worked. Do it strategically. Oh, yeah. Hey, I got some great Get pro up. practice. <laughs> Just after that last clip you saw, Riley went to go snap a quick photo of me holding up my ski. But before he had the chance to do that, we got smacked by some serious sloughing coming off the ridge above us. It wasn't enough to knock us off our feet, but it was enough to give us a good shock. We suspect that it might have been a cornice that had collapsed under the weight of the new snow and wind deposits, but it might have also just been a lot of sloughing. In the couple weeks that have passed since finding my ski, I've taken my AST2, a four-day intermediate level avalanche safety training course. During the course, I had the chance to chat with my guide and debrief my experience in Lover's Lane. And I think I learned a couple of good lessons. First off, things change really quickly in avalanche terrain. You really have to pay attention to changes in the big three, temperature, wind, and snowfall. My second thought is that we really should have just stayed and searched a little bit better on the day that I actually lost my ski, when we were really confident in the stability and when my bomb hole hadn't been sloughed out by the skiers that came after us. The last thing, and this is more of an approach thing than anything, is that avalanche terrain is basically the only place where being conservative is a good thing. In avalanche terrain, you really want to maximize your margin for error. In Lover's Lane, our margin for error was pretty wide. Even though we made a mistake and misjudged the size of the slough that could come down on us from the cliffs above, we weren't in a position where that slough could knock us over some cliffs. So you just want to be cognizant of the fact that mistakes do happen and you don't want one of those mistakes to end up costing a life. Yeah, these turns are going to be sweet. I'm going to just put my goggles on and put my probe away. Cool. Have fun. Will do.